again. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this out the way. You know what I'm saying? Seeing that I see that, uh, you know, we got some sensitive individuals on this social media tip, you know? So, seeing that I just got another strike on the YouTube, I don't know if this is actually going to be, um, broadcasting on the YouTube. I don't even know if it's going to be on Facebook. Surely, it won't be for long. However, as long as it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and speak on it, man. I'm going to speak my speech. I'm going to speak my speech. You already know it's Dezel, Liberation Minded Media. You know what I'm saying? Another K YouTube channel. Subscribe to the J Dezel YouTube channel because, you know, they, they, they surely are doing all they can to shut the shit down. All right. So, hold on real quick. Let me just see something. Let me just see. Oh, we good. We in the building. All right. So, <clears throat> for y'all that uh checked out that, Breakfast Club interview. Let me let me say this just off the rip, because we know it doesn't matter if you speak derogatory. All that matters is that you don't agree. So I know a lot of people that uh think that some of us are taking it too far. I know a lot of people who you know like like if you follow Irritated Genie, then you know that he's been speaking about this for some time now. And and you might think that he was crazy or or, or hypersensitive or or a little over the top, but it's kind of hard to deny these things in light of what we continue to see. Now, this isn't about the fact that I don't agree with their lifestyle. It has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about the alphabet soup, rainbow crew, um, sensitive, uh, you know, little letters. The lowercase little letter bunch that that's always uh, sensitive, but yet always trying to push what they believe on you, but they can't take the fact that you don't want to accept it. But this isn't about how I feel about them. In fact, how I feel about them is pretty much irrelevant. See, when I speak from this as an agenda, I'm not speaking from my personal how I feel about it. What I'm saying from the agenda aspect is the fact that it's being pushed on people to the point to where you have to accept it. You see, when I had um, Malcolm Flex on my show, and he read from what's called the Gay Manifesto, I put this on my YouTube channel. It was quickly taken down within like 30 minutes. Now, keep in mind that when my brother Malcolm Flex read the Gay Manifesto, we didn't drop any F-bombs. We didn't give our personal opinions. We didn't say that we hate these people. All we did is read from the manifesto that they wrote. Michael Swift wrote what's called the Gay Manifesto in 1987. And if you read or heard the Gay Manifesto, it's only a couple paragraphs. If you read that, you would see exactly what's going on right now. It's to the T. It's to the letter. They stated that they will. Listen, this is their words, not mine. In the Gay Manifesto, it was stated that they will sodomize our boys. That's what they said. This ain't me saying it. It's what they said. It's what they said in 1987, that they will sodomize our boys in the school. They will sodomize our boys in the Boy Scouts. They will sodomize our boys throughout society. This is what they said. They said that they will usurp the political game. They will usurp the law. They will make us have to accept it. They will make us praise it. And they also said basically that they'll make it illegal for us to resist it. This is their words, not mine. So when we speak about this uh, agenda, we're not speaking from a, we hate them. We're st speaking from a, hey, this is what they're implementing. This is what they're doing. They're purposely confusing children. They're purposely changing the language. And if you've seen this Breakfast Club interview with Malik Yoba, then you'll understand exactly how far this thing has went. Because at this point in time, they're all about confusion. Like they're coming up with these new terminologies. I, I want to go in and break down some of the things that I've seen from this interview um, on The Breakfast Club with Malik Yoba. Because what they're doing is is nothing short of what some of us have been speaking that they're going to do. So, so my point is this. My point is not to invoke hate towards them. My point is just peep game. Just peep game. And at some point... I mean, we we should be allowed to stand our ground. We should be able to say, look, 
we're not going to change millions of years of nature to accommodate one quarter percentage of the population so let me let me get this out to a couple other people real quick we got to get this out y'all so you know i i know some of y'all been seeing this and and this is you know at, at some point it's like how do we balance the we how do we balance the resistance how how do we um stand together to say look we're we're just not for this it's not that you do what you do over there look if you feel like you are a man who was born a woman or a woman that was born a man so be it but that doesn't mean that we have to change the definition of what a male or a female is so when they come with these crazy ideas that all of a sudden you're not born a male you're not born a female you were assigned to be a female by the doctor this this is what they're saying they're calling it gender assignment now they're, they're implying that it's, it's no longer the determinative factor of if you're a male or a female is no longer the genitalia that you're born with. It's how you feel. And they're implying that these babies are actually making these decisions. Or the doctors are making the decisions rather than, you know, um, science. Let, let me just explain something to you all, man. When we speak about the bathroom situation, you know, the, the whatever, unisex bathrooms. Let's, let's just break this down to very, very simple simplistics. Because a male bathroom is designed for those who have penises. A male bathroom is designed because males, boys, men, don't have to sit down to use the bathroom. So if we only have to go number one, it saves water and it saves space to have the stand-up urinal so we can get in and get out. That's what a, boy, that's what a men's bathroom is designed for. for not designed for how you feel it's designed by the biological makeup of the individual so a female bathroom seeing that females don't pee standing up no matter if they go number one or two they have to sit down that's why there's not urinals in the female bathroom and since females do go through a menstrual cycle and sometimes they have to change the sanitary napkins or whatever they use it it, it typically is probably stocked with those and other things that women may need that men don't so when we speak about this unisex bathroom and, you know, you have to have all these extra weird bathrooms for, for people and uh, men who feel like women should be able to use the woman bathroom, well, remember that the bathroom is not designed for how you feel. It's designed for how you are constructed physically. So with this new age of confusion coming in, you know what I'm saying, they're, they're, they're basically trying to make it seem like we're the weirdos for accepting the biological fact that gender is determined by the biological factors and characteristics of the human body, not by the emotional factors of how you feel, right? So by the standards that they're now trying to put on society and humanity, which goes against the natural norms of however many millions of years people have been on this planet, it is very simple. They're trying, they're trying to change the whole game. They're trying to change the whole game. And what they're doing is they're over-representing black people within this lifestyle. They'll have us believing that most black men are homosexual or attracted to trans. Now, now when you look at the picture that will come up in a minute for the Breakfast Club, their thumbnail... It appears that you're looking at two men flanking two women, meaning two women on the inside and then two men outside of them. But what you're actually looking at is is four men. The only woman that was in that interview that was in that building or in that room was Angie Martin or whatever her name is, Angela Yee. But they'll show you this white-looking chick with her tatas sticking out, but that's an actual man. And even that sister, that is a man. These are men. So these are four men, not only telling you that, not only trying to tell us that our sexuality is wrong and it's wrong for us to um, identify as men because that's a, a, a gender assignment by the, by the doctor, but they're also telling us the protocol and how to deal with women. These are four men, two of them who's had sex changes, to be women 
uh, let's just keep it a hundred, y'all. Woe to woe be the day when we take lessons and we take advice from people who don't understand the basic principle of who they are. If if someone is confused enough to where they don't understand that when you're born with a certain gen, uh, genetic genitalia that that makes you that gender, if they don't understand that, what can they really teach us about humanity? Let, let's just break down some of the things that was being said in this interview, man. Let's just break it down. So one of the things that they kept on saying, that they kept making a point, because remember, and this is why I say I understand like why black women in particular were uh, caping for the the agenda, the, the Rainbow Crew. I understand the reason why black women were caping for, or at least uh, excusatory towards the Rainbow Crew, is because they have been projected in a, narr- in a narrative that, a lot, that makes people think that they're being oppressed or held back in some kind of way. But this is what we're being told in so many ways, that they're being um, oppressed, that because uh, how they identify sexually orientation or whatnot, that this is causing you know, um, hardship in their life. But like I said, can you just show me examples of the Rainbow Crew not being able to get jobs because of their sexual orientation? They're overrepresented, overrepresented in the corporate world, in media, in entertainment. They're overrepresented, so they're not being held back. Can you show me police brutality aimed at the Rainbow Crew? You can't. Can you show me mobs of people going on mass shootings to kill them? Because all these mass shootings that's been happening lately, they've been white nationalists. Yeah, the one in Dayton, they killed six black people. This was a white nationalist. They're not targeting the rainbow bunch. They're just not. Because if they were truly being oppressed, and if this was truly a grassroots movement, I would understand, but it's not. This came from the top down. And, and since they have not only usurped our movement, not only did they try to make gay the new black, but they've also usurped the Equality Act of 1964 that our ancestors died for. And in doing so, now they have leverage in the reparations movement, which is why you've seen that moist Negro at the congressional hearing. So this is why I'm saying that this agenda is dangerous, not because I'm saying I hate these people, not because I'm saying that these people deserve a less standard of living. What I'm saying is that it's dangerous when you have the Rainbow Crew infiltrating and usurping a civil rights movement that was based upon the necessity of us being treated as e- equal and as human beings. That's why it's dangerous. Because they're now usurping that. Now they're moving us out the way. Because you can say whatever you want about black people all day long. But you can't even say you disagree with this particular lifestyle that we know is not normal. So the only thing that they that they could bring up to show any kind of oppression or um, assaults against them is they'll bring up, which they brought up yesterday several times, they brought up that black tees are being murdered. However, let's look at the reason why these black tees are being murdered. We know what it is. We know it's because they deceived people into going against their own sexuality. Because if they thought what they were doing was normal, they would be able to be upfront about it. They wouldn't have to slide in and act like they're something that they're not. And then once they get someone to engage sexually with them, the first thing they want to do is out them. Tell everybody, oh yeah, I'm a tranny, and everybody, you didn't even know that. And, yeah, you slept with a, you slept with a man. So if they will do that, that lets you know right there that they think what they're doing, how they, their lifestyle is wrong. If they feel like that they have to sleep with someone on false pretense and then expose them, that lets you know that they had malice intent from the get go, and that they knew what they were doing was wrong. So now they want to ridicule. So you can't say that you're equal and you should be treated equal, but then you'll use your sexuality as a weapon against people. You understand? You dig? 
So let's let's just keep it a buck. You you have a right to your lifestyle. Oh yeah, and then this this uh, Malik Yoba dude, man. Let, let's just keep it real. He's trying to equate and imply that that T's and G's and B's have contributed to the black struggle in some significant way that we wouldn't be where we're at if it wasn't for them. Cut it out. He even tried to bring Nipsey Hussle into the thing. See, see what they're trying to do right now is because they know, see, they, they call black men hyper-masculine, right? We're hyper-masculine because when, when you really look at the numbers, black people and black men in, 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 in general are not with the shits. Like, like we're not kowtowing to this new world of we have to accept this weird, confusing mess. So they call us hyper-masculine. So now what they're attempting to do with this Malik Yoba, if you watch this interview, you can see what it is. See, he's trying to make um, G's and T's a new um, standard of masculinity. So he, so he's there with his tough, I'm a tough black guy act. I just happen to be attracted to T's. But I'm not homosexual because T's are really W's. Now, now, I know we got to play this alphabet game because we know how it goes. You know what I'm saying? We know how it goes. We, we, we got to play these stupid little games because we're being actually bullied by this agenda. See, they're bullying us in, in ways that we can't speak our truth without someone getting sensitive and reporting you. Thus, we don't get our message out. Thus, they get to control the narrative. So, yeah, so maybe we do have to be careful with certain things. That's why I don't use F-bombs. I don't, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I don't do the disrespect. I, I just want to show some perspective to what's really going on because we're not able to control our own narrative based on the fact that if we go against what they believe in, that they will pull the plug. So let's get into this a little bit more, man. So another thing that was interesting on this, Charlemagne pretty much came out the closet on this one. And they kept on asking Malik to come out to come out the closet, but he kept he, he kept making sure that he referred to what he's saying and what he's doing, not as coming out. He doesn't want to call it coming out. He said he wants to call it stepping up. So think about the implications of that, the step up. See, the step up is something that, you know, uh, we say uh, as men, as you know, taking uh, your responsibilities and stepping up to your manhood and stepping up to your responsibilities as a man. So now he's he's equating him coming out the closet with stepping up. See, they're, they're changing the law. They're changing the language and they're changing the terminologies. They don't they, now they have all these different new weird terms like you should see. I mean, if you saw the, the you, you would know if you've seen this interview because they're sitting there telling Malik, here's how you have to speak. Oh, you said you want to be part of us. You want to support this. This is how you have to speak. We don't want to be called this and that anymore. We want to be called this and that. Oh, we're, we're, we're calling it gender assignment now. It's not that you're born a male or a female. You're assigned that. And if you decide to accept that assignment, then you're this and that like like crazy shit. Like, we have to go through this whole new English lesson now because we don't want to offend. See, what they did is they continued to act like they're offended. See, what they'll do is because we don't understand this different lingo and because we don't understand the mind process of somebody who will mutilate themselves. You see, if, if, if I said I was going to cut off my arm or I was going to cut off my hand or my finger because I feel like I should have just been born with four fingers or I feel like I should have just been born with one arm or one hand, y'all would look at me like I'm crazy. I would probably be reported to some type of authorities who would probably isolate me from society because they would think, yo, if you emulate yourself, you may just harm others. This is what would happen if I told you I wanted to cut off my arm or my leg. But if I told you I wanted to cut off my genitals, there would be a support network. There would be people applauding me and that would be seen as normal. So because we don't see self-mutilation as normal, they act like they're offended because we don't understand what they're going through. But the truth is they don't understand what they're going through. See, you can't tell me to accept you for who you are. 
yet you don't accept you for who you are. Feel me? But this is the new world that we're that we're living in. But I'm saying I, I'm not going with I'm not with the shits, y'all. I'm just not. I'm not with the shits. I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend that this is normal and cool. I'm not saying that people should be, you know, ha, you know, uh, harmed for how they feel inside or their sexuality. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that look, if that's what y'all want to do, then do that. What you don't do is make us accept that. Because this is just, um, and this is something that's been happening gradually and gradually. You see, when people first started speaking about this, when I first started Black Guy Stand Radio and I had Irritated Genie and Dawa Israel on, this was 2015, and we spoke about these things. And we told you that these things were happening. We told you this was going to happen. We told you the detriments of the Rainbow Crew. We told you. We, t- we told you three, three principal things that I made sure I stated. Then, number one, pedophilia is coming with this rainbow crew normalization. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, because now they're adding the P to this thing, and they're and they're legalizing. They're, they're they're going through the steps of legalizing and normalizing sexual attraction to children. And if you notice, you never hear the rainbow crew disassociate themselves from the P's. I told you this would happen. We told you this would happen. Also told you that the line of what rape is would be blurred because the Rainbow Crew captain is the G's, as Dave Chappelle stated. It's the G's. And the G's don't care about the well-being of women. So this is what we were trying to explain to some of the women who keep on caping. Matter of fact, a sister called into my show when I had, was it Dawa Israel on the show? And she told me about a man she used to date who not only had uh, problems, you know, you know, uh, keeping his attraction to her during intimate situations, but then he broke down and told her what happened to him as he was, when he was a child. Come on, man, we're not we're not playing these games. Another thing I told you is that they're going to usurp that the the civil rights movement. All these things, three things have happened. So now they're getting more emboldened to introduce these different fetishes and lifestyles. Like, it, it doesn't take... I understand trying to have empathy for people because we don't know how they feel inside and what they're going through. That's fine. That's one thing. But it's another thing to push it on us and make us accept it. We should have... We have the right not to accept it. And you can't say it's natural. You know, a study just came out for all the people who saying that they were born this way. You know, a study just came out. The biggest study done, the biggest research, objective research on this subject came out on PBS. I think I shared it somewhere. I think I shared it around. Which stated that sexuality cannot be determined by genes. In other words, you can't be born into the Rainbow Crew. That's a choice that you make. You choose to sleep with who you sleep with. You're not born. Babies aren't. And this is something that we even went through. Me and Irritated Genie. You know, saying when some of the Rainbow Crew was calling in, not only were they coming with all kinds of racism against black people, because if you think the Rainbow Crew is less racist than heterosexual white men, then you're crazy. They're probably more racist. But we even broke down the whole you can't be born gay because babies aren't born sexually attracted to anybody. Babies aren't born trying to have sex. Uh, uh, unlike what Sigmund Freud tried to say when he said babies are sexual creatures but despite that garbage babies aren't born attracted to anybody children naturally develop to be attracted to the opposite sex unless there's an interruption so no they're not born with the sexuality so so it's not right to teach them homosexuality and it's not even right to teach them heterosexuality if you let nature take its course they're gonna babies and, and children are gonna grow to do what babies and children have been growing to do for millions of years, and that is procreate. Because you can't say that this is natural, because nothing in nature purposely extincts itself. So you can't tell me it's natural 
But if we put you on an island amongst just yourselves, you would be done in one generation. It can't be natural if the only way you can reproduce your numbers is by adopting children and then turn them out to your lifestyle. That's obviously not within nature. So this is not about hate, but let's just keep it a buck. Yeah, I know I'm going back to Facebook jealous. It is what it is. Let me see what else we had, man. Another thing. So so remember what I was talking earlier about how these uh how these T's will try to um, sneak in bed with heterosexual men and then they'll out them later. Well, that's that's a sentiment that a lot of them have. See, because they know that what the, what they're doing in their lifestyle, they know it's it, it's it's off brand shit. They know it's not right. They know it's not natural. They know it's not cool. So they'll seek alliances no matter how they can get them. So during this interview, you see these cats outing all kinds of people who didn't wish to out themselves, obviously, but they're outing them. They're they're gonna make them come to the table because they're they're trying to garner an army it's like they're going to war with society they're going to war with humanity they're going to war with nature they can't win this war but they are going to wage it but they love to have that fake outrage throughout this throughout this whole interview what you'll notice is they have a fake outrage anytime someone can't explain it so so they 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 jumped in the whole game with the word T's so they can add their letter to the alphabet soup but now they don't want to be called T's and now they're offended if you call them T's this is where we're going with this thing so they they really don't know what they want which makes sense because how could you know what you want if you're born one way but then you want to change yourself one way but then you still want to be attracted to the ones you're supposed to be attracted to the way you were born it's crazy <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's, 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 it's crazy but but watch the moves that they do because now they're trying to um, even they're, they're trying to they've been trying to do this but now they're stepping up their attempt to compare their struggle to black struggle to black they're trying to blacken this rainbow crew movement they're trying to blacken this t these t movements that's what they're trying to do and and, and, and they even use religion malik yoba said oh my name is my, my last name yoba means last of the slaves and blah 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 so he, what he tried to do is he tried to equate see he's trying to garner support as if yo i'm a i'm a black man i'm a strong i'm a, I'm a proud black man and i'm all about the blackness and and this is really a black movement this is what they were saying they're they're trying to usurp this shit they're trying to usurp what it means to be black. They're trying to usurp our struggle and what we've been going through. We never struggled because of our sexuality. In fact, if even if these rainbow cats would stay on code with the struggle that we are that we've been having here for the past several centuries, guess what? They would be cool anyway. No matter what their sexuality, if, if if black people obtain the justice due to us, that would include them too. But them obtaining what they call justice for their sexuality is not helping the rest of the black cause. It's really not even helping them. It just means that they have a safe spot in bed, multiculturally speaking. But when you're driving down the street, it don't matter if you're a tranny or a don't matter no matter what letter you want to represent if you have melanated skin the police officer the same police officers that are killing babies the same police officers that are killing 12 year olds at the park the same police officers that that are uh shooting down people for reaching for their wallets or the same police officers that will still shoot them down they're not gonna not shoot them down because you identify as a t or a b or a g or a q or any of these other letters that's not the issue. So to so to redirect our energy from our being as humans to redirect this towards our sexuality is backwards. Not only that, to me it's a red flag if you identify with your sexuality before anything else. When, when do you do that? That should be like a red flag. Doesn't that kind of tell you that you're a little bit over over a uh, hypersexative if you identify with who you want to have sex with before you identify with who you are 
if you can embody your whole existence based upon who you want to have sex with, shouldn't that be a red flag? If I went to a, a job interview telling them who I'm a, a sexually attracted to, wouldn't the boss, wouldn't, wouldn't the dude or whoever's hiring me look at me like, yo, why are you telling me this? The hell does that have to do with this job? But this is what they do. So that's how come you see black people who identify with all these letters and bright colors, you see them not so much pushing for the black agenda, they're pushing for the rainbow agenda. They're pushing for their sexuality agenda. They're pushing for the right to do things that they already have the right to do because nobody's stopping them from doing what they want to do. No one's stopping them from getting these surgeries if that's what they want. Nobody's stopping them from holding hands with same gender lovers. No one's stopping them from that. Nobody's at their bedroom saying you can't have this person in your bedroom because that's the same sex. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's impeding on their right to exist or their right to be happy or their right to prosper. In fact, when you really look at it, the Rainbow Crew per capita is one of the most privileged groups in, in the United States and the most prosperous. Ain't nobody stopping their bag. And when you really look at it, the reason I really said that the Rainbow Crew usurping the Equality Act of 1964, the, the reason why I really said that that was dangerous was because I understand that the Rainbow Crew, despite the pictures that they continue to show us, the Rainbow Crew consists of privileged, middle-aged white people. That's the bulk of the crew who now has the right to have leverage in the reparations movement. See, they, they use these people. Look at this. Out of all these people on this panel, and I understand it's the Breakfast Club, but just, just, just understand that when you see them really, really pushing that civil rights and really, really pushing that, that agenda, they always use people like us to do so. Why do they do that? Because they couldn't justify themselves being a civil rights movement if all they showed was a bunch of rich, overprivileged, wealthy white folks. You wouldn't say that that is an oppressed group if you've seen the group for what the numbers really are. But when you put some brother who had a sex change that now wears some red dreads next to Malik Yoba, two rows away from two seats away from a brother who identifies as gay right next to a ambiguous Puerto Rican white dude with tits all of a sudden now you can say that this is a civil rights movement but remember that this movement is astroturf it's not grassroots it's astroturf meaning it came from the top down meaning it didn't come because there were really um you know, people are being oppressed and beat up and they had to get together and they had to work together to, to, you know, bond together and create an organization. And that's not how it came to be. It came to be from the top. That's why me and they took the video down, the gay manifesto. It might be on my Facebook. It's not on the YouTube, but I guess, but it is in within one of my other YouTube videos. So this is why me and Malcolm Flex read the gay manifesto. Because the Gay Manifesto tells you exactly what they were planning on doing since 1987. And this came from a high-ranked, uh, wealthy, powerful person. It didn't come from somebody who just was getting beat up on the... No, he said, we're going to infiltrate every element of society and make you accept it. This is what he said. He even used the word he is going to... What was the word? Sodomize. So he said, we're going to force this on people. So when I'm saying it's an agenda, I didn't even know about this when I first started speaking about this as an agenda. I just identified that's what it was. But out of their own mouth, this is what they said in 1987. Just, just Google the Gay Manifesto, 1987, Michael Swift. And then you tell me if we're just tripping. Tell me if I'm just tripping or tell me if they're not actually on schedule to do what they said they were going to do, what they sought out to do. Tell me if they're not actually purposely assaulting. Because they said they're going to sodomize our boys in the gay manifesto. 
I'm not, I'm not putting something on them that they didn't say. This is what they said. Oh yeah, and then 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 you know saying so so here's what they do though. So as much as they don't like to be, you know they don't they don't like to be made fun of because they're mad at Dave Chappelle. You know what I'm saying like so so they'll put themselves in a space to be offended and then they'll. Fiend, then they'll act like, oh, they're so offended. But they put themselves in the space. They purposely went to the space. They knew how Dave Chappelle gets down. They purposely went to the show knowing it's called Sticks and Stones. You might get hurt. So they purposely did that so they could act like they're offended because that helps with their agenda. Yet, that uh, white uh, male with the titties that you're looking at right now took all kinds of shots at 50 cents. Oh yeah, I don't like 50 Cent because he, the things that he's said about us and this and that, and you know, no wonder his music isn't selling anymore. I don't know. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying. So, so they don't mind taking shots. See, they'll they'll they'll, they'll take shots. They'll disrespect. They'll come out and clown. They'll, they'll 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 take jabs. But then as soon as you jab them back, it's a problem. We're, you can't force people to accept. Your lifestyle, especially if your lifestyle is crazy. If I came out and said, yo, I feel like a tiger. I'm going to paint some stripes on me and, and run around. Rawr. You would look at me like I'm crazy. You say, no, you're not a tiger. That, that's why I had to steal this sister's uh, Facebook status when she said, yo, I feel I'm broke, but I feel rich. And my financial institution is just not accepting my lifestyle choice. Because, because that's actually how ridiculous this stuff sounds. It's ridiculous. You are what you are. If you choose to uh, get down a certain way, then just own that shit. But but know that if you're telling some, if you're telling 99% of the population that you're going to gonna go against nature and go against what they believe, you should expect some 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 backlash. Yeah, call me old fashioned. You know what I'm saying? But now they make it wrong like that. They make it wrong. Because grown men are saying, no, we, we don't accept the fact that if you had a sex change that you're a woman. And women, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real, sisters. I understand that maybe if you thought that they were being oppressed, maybe you felt like, yo, you need to um, cape form or whatever because, you know, you don't want to see people get, a, you know, feeling oppressed. When I get that part, but they weren't being oppressed is the point. And now they're saying that they are you. So pretty. So so basically, you're setting yourself up for the new women to be T's because they want to be called you. They want to be you. They're trying to take your spot. Uh -oh, hold on. They want to take your spot. They don't have menstruals. They can't have babies. They don't go through the things that you go through. But they're trying to take your spot. And now they're telling people how we should, how society should. The protocol for society in dealing with women, but these are men. Remember that. These are men. These are men who want to be you. All four of these clowns right here. They want to be you. They're just taking different steps. Because the two brothers on the outside, they want to be you because they're attracted to the same people you're attracted to. I don't care what Malik Yoba's talking about. I only like women. Trying to, you know, have his cake and eat it too. I don't like women, but I also like, but trans people are women. Even if these trans people have penises, I'm still going to see them as women because they see themselves as women. We're not even making sense anymore. But at least the other two committed to it to the point where, you know, saying they, they actually mutilated themselves. I'm not saying I respect that more, but I mean, at least, at least they committed to the cause. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And we shouldn't have to play games to stand on humanity, to stand on principles, to stand on nature. Let me see what's up. So they act like they're traumatized, matter of fact. These are the words that they use. They said that they're traumatized by the fact that some people don't agree with them and may say words. So they're so 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 you're telling me the same people who will self mutilate themselves who will cut their genitals off 
and have an operation to put genitals that don't belong to them on are traumatized by words? That's what you're telling me? You're telling me that you weren't traumatized to have your ears cut off, but you're traumatized because somebody is saying that's gross. Cut it out, man. Playing games. One minute they want to be like everyone else. They're just the same as everyone else. And then the next minute, they want you to see the difference. One minute, they, they're like everyone else. But everyone else has to take jokes. We make jokes about women. We make jokes about black people. We make jokes about white people. We make jokes about, you know, saying everything in, in life. We make jokes. That's, that's what comedians do. That's what people do to deal with things. You know, we make jokes. We clown. We goof around. We do that kind of thing. But they don't want to be made fun of, though. So they're not really secure with the decision that they have made. They also said, well, let me wrap this up like this real quick. Because some of the things that, that, that was said is just so ridiculous. They said that most kids in high school don't identify as heterosexual. Are you kidding me? You're telling me that most kids don't identify as heterosexual. Since when? Since, since since you guys have been confusing them? Since you guys have been throwing trannies in their face to teach classes? Is that when they stopped identifying as heterosexual? Is that what it is? Just be real. But one thing that's interesting that I've spoke on before that they that, that keeps being verified by what they're saying, they're basically verifying they keep saying the same thing it always leads to it always boils down to they were sexually abused Malik Yoba said he was sexually abused and I'm sure if you ask the other three people on that panel if they were honest they're going to tell you that they were sexually abused as a child so that's why I brought up you know what I'm saying before um, one time I was watching Oprah Renfe years ago and uh dude from different strokes uh willis drummond uh, todd bridges was on different strokes and, and what he said was that he was abused by all these uh executives and all this in the hollywood game he was abused they were sexually abusing him as a child so he thought he was gay because of that abuse because he was a child he couldn't process that he didn't understand why his body responded and he didn't realize that he wasn't a homosexual until he met homegirl on the set and he was attracted to her. So that means that if he didn't meet her, it's likely that he would have continued the lifestyle of being a homosexual because he didn't know any better because he was a child and this was done to him. My point is, I can't say that all homosexuality is from abuse and trauma, but it, it, it's not a coincidence that a majority of homosexual people claim to be a claim to have been abused sexually or mentally had some type of trauma so that's not to shame them I'm just saying like yo maybe that's why you think that you're born that way and if it was a trauma induced um, sexual orientation then possibly you may need some help to establish what you really feel about your sexuality that's all I'm I'm suggesting but nevertheless just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that you can push on everybody else so I, you know I, I fucks with the breakfast club because you know they do give us some pretty good interviews and they put some people on there I even fucks with Charlemagne even though we know that he has moist tendencies and he all but said he was gay on the damn show yesterday I fucks with the breakfast club but this was not a good look and one of the tranny or one of the T's in the middle I forgot which one or maybe it was the dude on the outside in the white shirt kept saying yo you need to have more of us on so he, he's pleading to have more representation because what they want to do is normalize they want to continue to put that in our face until our children who are easily impressed will say well that's obviously what it's supposed to be this is where it's at so so it's crazy when I put the little post about uh, the white girl cutting off dreads, right? Cutting, and what everybody was saying was, oh, yeah, it's not their I, I said, yo, if you're going to let her cut your dreads, you shouldn't have had them anyway. Because to what dreads mean to me, to get off subject, what locks mean to me is different. 
you're not everybody ain't supposed to just wear locks. If I see somebody with locks, I'm supposed to know exactly what's up. I'm supposed to know that he, you know. So I say, yo, everybody ain't supposed to wear them anyway. So everybody came to the defense. Oh, well, they're, you know, they're kids. They're, they're easily impressed. But these were like boys, man. These, or these weren't boys. These were like teenagers and young men, though. They're old enough to not let a motherfucker cut their locks. If that's not what they want. If that's what they want, cool. Like I said. But now let's go ahead and scale that back. Since we're so concerned about these impressionable youngsters. Let's scale that back to the fact that we're continuously having these things pushed on our children. Because now you can see the Rainbow Crew overrepresented in cartoons. TV programs. Music. Movies. Online. We're seeing the overrepresentation. It's not scaled to the population. That's what I'm saying. If you want to sit up here and tell me that the Rainbow Crew was being oppressed some kind of way, well, if I was to make a video saying straight people suck, you think that that would be taken down? No, it wouldn't. But if I make a video, as I have, just showing you what the Rainbow Crew executives said that they want to do to us, they took that shit down. Within 30 minutes, they took that shit down. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, how many views? I don't I don't have that big of a channel. My channel is like, what? Almost 5,000 subscribers. You took it down in 30 minutes. I didn't have that many damn views within 30 minutes. And the way they've been attacking my channel, I don't even really get that many views anymore because they continue taking things down. They'll flag it. They'll mess up the algorithms. So, are they threatened by someone having a different opinion? I guess they are. Anyway, it's Jay Dizzle Nettercat. I see this isn't going on my live stream on YouTube, so they definitely cut that out. It's likely or very possible that they're going to do the same for the Facebook. So I'm sure somebody will see this. That'll feel some kind of way. Get in their feelings. And probably flag it. But it is what it is. Dizzle.